All right, now with holes cut for the legs, it's time to get some structure into the forward fuselage. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, today is all about the forward fuselage and the structural members of that. There's a few critical elements of the forward fuselage. Below me, you're catching a glimpse of what we're working on in the main pieces at play. The lower longer on, the auxiliary longer on, the forward fuselage skin stiffener, and then below all those, we have the main longer on or upper longer on that runs fore to aft on the entire fuselage. Starting with the auxiliary longer on, which comes partially fabricated with the leg of the angle milled out from the factory, we mark the center line, we add a twist, and we have to cut that one to length. Now we just gotta cut the angle on the aft end to get it to fit in here perfect. I took more off the back end than I actually thought I'd have to. So much, in fact, that I had to reference the instructions and the plans about 50 times to make sure something wasn't lined up incorrectly. Rather than filing, as the instructions say, I wound up matching that angle and taking it over to the bandsaw. If I had filed, I think I'd still be here to this day. The next pieces we're fitting are ones that I've bemoaned in the past. They have this joggle in the end, which is little more than just a big bulge where there shouldn't be a bulge. So we'll take some, some uh, finessing with a hammer and the vise to see if we can get these to fit. shape we need to make some brackets to hold those into place so out with the usual sharpie we'll get this marked up and then sawn to pieces
So the brackets I made are going to wind up attaching these skin stiffeners right in like this. However, on this end, I've got just a little too much material and it's binding up against the 704. The instructions don't say anything about adjusting this piece, um, but they do say you're gonna have to fit them much like these, which we also filed at an angle. So I'm gonna take this leg down here and I think that'll be just enough so that this piece fits snug. Now, this is where that misformed, I call it misformed, joggle was here. I've tried to correct it a little bit. It does overlap the 704 unlike these pieces. So we'll file it real quick. We'll jump back in the plane, see if it fits. And if so, we'll similarly get these drilled in. Well, it fits, but there's a gaping hole where this joggle is supposed to make room for that 704. Uh, I'm going to do my best to smash on this thing a little more and see if we can't close that up. If we don't, the skin is going to get pulled in on the outside of the plane. You'll see it for sure. These details are absolutely exhausting, but I think I got them fitting right. This piece is going to get clamped into position, much like the one above it, centered on these holes, and we'll get it clecoed there. Then I got to figure out the bracket on the forward end and how to get it drilled into position with limited access. If you're making your brackets and you haven't drilled your holes yet, I wouldn't. The reason is I now have to get this placed and use those as pilot holes to match drill, which means coming up in here and behind here. And that's a lot more difficult than simply drilling right through here and right through the top, which I could do if I didn't have holes in any of these. I'm going to have to clamp this in place and peel back the skin. I think it's going to be a lot of work. Okay, that's cool. Good. Top first. We'll click on this side. Take that, just that one out. Sweet! Well, figure that one out. That's cool. Does that work? Yeah. You need, you need help? Yep. I'm That's happy good. to help. 
I'm just admiring my work. We did good. That was good thinking you did. Yeah, good stuff. Yep. All right. You got a nail now. piece or one of the last pieces of these stiffeners and long rounds up front are the lower ones made from this extrusion here. They look pretty simple, um, but I have a feeling there's still a lot of work involved. We will get started. So the lower longer on is just about there and I wanted to take it over to fit to see if anything needs adjustment. I had a, a slight concern that it's sitting too high. In fact, it looks like this whole skin is sitting too high or in case, in this case, too low because it's upside down. Um, the longer on when resting on the motor mount bracket lines up perfectly with this flange on the firewall and this is just lower than that and I'm, I panicked a little bit but it turns out in my research that's pretty normal. Not just pretty normal, it's actually correct. The instructions will later call out that the lower longer on should sit proud of the skin about one eighth of an inch. Um, what does need a little adjustment is in here where these two pieces just barely kiss so we need to sort of let one in a little bit um, in order to prevent there being 
an issue with fitment. And then on the back side, we've got a couple other questionable issues. Um, one, I'm not quite sure if the flange that I removed needs to be removed all the way down to perfectly flush. My, my guess is it is because we've got some other pe pieces coming in, in which case I've got a lot of filing ahead of me. Um, that's not a problem, we can get it done. The other piece that needs to be adjusted to fit is it's currently overlapping a little bit on the 704 uh, spar flange and it needs to, to nest in here perfectly because we're going to have a plate that goes over all this. So. A little bit of work to do. Might as well get going on it. All right, it's there. And sometimes on this project, you get into a piece and, and things just click. The fit of this is satisfying. It's, it's just a perfect fit. I've got it sort of notched around every little nook and cranny. I love where it sits. The only stressful part is I got one more to do. So the last part of this was determining whether or not the, the little remnant of this leg of the angle that, that existed after I removed it needed to be filed down to the same level of this or not. Um, and I feel like I owe Vans uh, a little bit of gratitude here because I've been pretty harsh on them and I was excited to see when I had a little cutout here that's the exact size needed to make room if you didn't get that flange cut exactly flush like I didn't. So, all I had to do was slightly radius the remnant of that flange, and this, once again, fits perfect. In fact, leaving a little bit of that helps everything kind of nestle into place. I'm very happy with it. All that's left to do is everything all over again for the second side. Round two was much quicker, much easier, when I knew what I had to do. The only problem is I got a little carried away on top here with my cross hatching, not realizing that I was off by an inch. I now have a hole where there shouldn't be a hole. Now, we all know that's not the first in this plane, but it is the first in a long run. So that requires an email to Vans. Spoiler here, email sent, response received, Vans went ahead and said build on. Uh, to ensure that it's okay. I'd say it's about a 50-50 chance that I wind up remaking this piece um, and it won't break my heart uh, because I'm, I'm not real happy that there's a hole there. However, it's not really going to be seen, um, I don't think ever, and it does maintain all edge distance. It likely doesn't um, sacrifice any integrity of this piece, so I will check it with them. If they say build on, I'll be tempted to build on. It does break my heart a little bit. These pieces were fitting so fantastic. They were pretty much perfect uh, up until that. With that, we're gonna keep moving. I don't even know what's next, so I gotta go reference the instructions. Pardon the mess. Uh, believe it or not, I'm in the middle of some reorganizing. Uh, but it's been a minute since I've provided a more real-time update uh, on the laser cut kit parts, how that's affecting me, and just some general housekeeping of my build project. I thought now would be a great time to do that. Um, first of all, Vans has released another little bit of information as to their status on researching the laser cut kits. This was on August 12th, which was just yesterday for me. Of course, by the time you see this, it'll be about a week ago. 
their testing continues. Uh, however, it seems like the, the stance is softening on all of these parts needing to be replaced, meaning uh, in their testing they've indicated that laser cut uh, parts are performing better than expected, um, sometimes better than the punched counterparts. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are A, free to incorporate these kits into your plane, or B, don't need to replace any parts that you've already incorporated into your plane, which is more of the boat that I land in. I think some parts still will need to be replaced. However, I uh, continue to go through my exercise of seeing what those parts are. I've been going through old videos and, and have a pretty clear idea on exactly what parts I might need to replace depending on Vance tests. Vance has also noted that parts adjacent to the, the parts that you're going to replace uh, may be available at deep discounts. This was something that I communicated some apprehension about uh, when going to replace parts. How, how do we know that we're going to be able to get to it without damaging adjacent or neighboring parts? Um, well, they have indicated that they will be uh, providing pretty significant discounts on those pieces, which is a bit of good news, but I think it gives some credence to my original assessment uh, that the builder is going to see some pain from this just as well as Vance, um, and that we're both going to be in, in uncomfortable positions by the time we uh, are made whole on this. Um, but again, I, I think that's to be expected when there's uh, an issue that is uh, as prevalent and prolific as what we're seeing with Vance parts. What else have I been doing? Well, I've been hesitant to rivet anything to my plane, if you've noticed. Um, luckily for me, uh, the damage is sort of done. Uh, most of the parts that were laser cut are already in the airplane. Uh, also lucky for me, I'm in a, a spot on the build where I just haven't needed to rivet. In fact, I don't think I've set a rivet in over two months uh, or close to it. I've been working my way on the fuselage, as you know. Uh, there's a lot of fabrication in building this up and fortunately I get to tear it all down when I go to prep and deburr and prime. Um, that's also going to give me a, a good look at uh, some parts that may be in there uh, that were laser cut and I can inspect the rivets and the dimples to see if I have any issues there. Uh, I think by the time I am ready to get my fuselage riveted together, Vans will have made uh, some steps in, in giving us guidance and direction on what we should do with regards to these laser cut parts and hopefully the, the progress on both ends, mine and Vans, kind of forms a confluence uh, at, at optimal timing uh, when we figure out what we're going to do. Along with that research and filling out my, my spreadsheet and figuring out what parts we're in, I realized that my build was in need of some organization and uh, I went through and I got a lot of my paperwork assembled. Um, I've gotten my build logs in order. I'm trying to get those all in one space along with build photos. Now, these videos will also uh, be utilized as a build log of sorts, uh, but I think it's still good to have uh, a written build log with printouts that somebody can go through. Um, along with that, I will have a separate binder uh, for my build that, that documents exactly how I've gone about correcting any issues with regard to laser cut parts. Uh, I think that's going to be huge when it comes to um, future documentation, perhaps resale of the plane. Now, again, lucky for me, I still got plenty of work that I can do as we get through this laser cut parts uh, fiasco, um, and so I'm going to keep my head down and keep moving forward as far as I can. But first, before we get to that, uh, I recently came across some new tools that I want to highlight in a segment coming up here next. I wanted to stop real quick and give a shout out to the folks at Pan American Tool. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, now, I recently entered their Instagram photo contest and I won. And I had my choice of a Nova drill or a 90 degree angle grinder. Now, my drill is still going strong, so I chose the grinder. And I think anybody that's watched my channel knows it's probably a tool that I very much need in my toolbox. Uh, I've been blown away by this thing. Now, to be clear, I didn't pay for this. Uh, but there has been no agreement where I have to feature it on this channel. Uh, I'm simply doing it because I genuinely love the thing. I did click the box that says there's a paid subscription. That's just me trying to be completely above board because again, this was a gift. But here's the deal. You've seen me struggle with the wrong tool for the job uh, or often the cheap tools that I bemoan. This is neither. Uh, this thing has proven to be quite a, a handy thing to have around. It does a number of things for me. Creating and shaping notches and holes in aluminum is something that previously I've utilized the grinder for um, with 
decent success, but it's a, it's a little unwieldy. This thing makes it a breeze. I was also given attachments for a cutoff wheel, uh, which will replace the angle grinder with something that's a lot more lightweight and nimble. One of the cooler attachments uh, are what they call conditioning wheels, and these are great for deburring or surface prep where we're about to prime. I've yet to really ring this thing out, but I'm very excited to include it in my build from here on out. It's quickly becoming a must-have tool. Once again, thanks to the folks at Pan American Tool. Uh, I can't wait to keep using this. Let's get back to it. I think I should have gone for a large. I know I kept saying that we're going to get back to the project, and we are, unfortunately, just not on this episode. Uh, this is a really good time to cut this one, and I'm just about at my self-imposed time limit, so I'm going to do it while you watch me wrestle with this gear weldment. Now, next time, I assure you, I do get this piece in place, and when I do, we're going to hit some fun things like bolting on these longer ons, making fuel tank attach brackets, gussets, and much, much more. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for subscribing. Leave me a comment, hit the like button, and I will see you next time on Ryan Flies.